this is a walkthrough of the Confederate app. Uh, it has three dedicated views that do very similar, but still different things. Uh, the first view, which is probably the most expected to be used, uh, just lets the user edit uh, any com file that will reside in the local directory of a specific app. So for example, I am going to assume a scenario where I want to create an indexed field. Uh, and that would require me to use fields.conf. In a regular scenario, I would have to get an SSH access to the box and, and uh, add a indexed key to, to that field to make it index. But here, let's just assume that I I have a field. I can create a new one, uh, but I could also use any of the existing ones. Uh, but I'm gonna I'm gonna create a new one here, uh, and I'm gonna use my Confederate app just so it's easier to verify what's happening. And this is going to be global because it's uh, set an index value, but it could also be app. It would work regardless. It still saves it in the app uh, folder. So if I go here. I can set the indexed value for that to be true, and that's going to save it into fields.conf and the conf editor app. Before I save here, I'm just going to verify that the app is indeed uh, how it's supposed to be. So this is just a clean app without any local folder. If I hit save here, I should see a new local folder, a fields.com file, and the stands that I just created has been appended to it. And I could add uh, other values here if I wanted to, um, like the tokenizer, and set that if it's a multi-value field. But I'm not going to bother with that. But essentially, this is how this would work for any of the, of the values that fields account supports. And I could also go back and choose a different com file. Uh, let's say I wanted to make changes to the inputs.conf, which probably wouldn't be necessary since Splunk has uh, an inputs management UI. But uh, for example, if I wanted to just see what an input defines in a file without going to the file, uh, all these inputs are defined in this app. I can just click that and see all of that info without, even if I don't intend to edit it. So back to version, I could just disable it here, but I could also disable it using the inputs uh, UI that Splunk has. So this flow works for any of the files that's listed here. And I could also use it to create uh, a new Con file, um, which uh, I can do that here. Test value, why not? If I save this, I can see my new con file was created and I can see the stanza that was added and the test value. And this would work nicely for any app that have that has a a custom configuration file that uh, Splunk wouldn't obviously provide a UI for, and if the app itself doesn't provide a UI for, you would have to uh, normally go through uh, directly onto the box to edit the file. Uh, so that's the general one and probably the most uh, common to be used. Again, uh, there's one end, uh, view here that allows editing system con files, which are the, the files that go into system local instead of the app local folder. So if I go back here, I'm in my etsy Splunk folder, I can go to system. And if I go into default, I'll see all this default con files that Splunk adds for the system, including the limits, all this other nice stuff. Uh, again, I don't expect people to use this very often, but I could 
let's say I want to increase a limit for the instance. Uh, let's say a search related limit. Uh, where is search? Uh, this will give me the direct link to the docs for that file. So I can just make sure that I know what I'm doing. Uh, there are a lot of um, stanzas here, but just for the sake of example, it's, uh, I don't know, let's set this to five. I'm not even sure I know what this does, but uh, as you can see, this pulls in all of the values that are defined by default. Um, and if I change any of these values, then it would just update that changed one into local. Uh, and this kind of gives a warning here because this is a limit file, uh, updating it doesn't automatically reflect within Splunk until the restart has been run, uh, but the app is gonna leave that up to the user to choose to restart. It doesn't actually prompt, but it will make the change to the file. So if I save here and I go back to uh, my system folder, I can see there's a, a local folder now. And if I view my limits file, lo and behold, the search standard has been updated with the base max searches decreased from six to five. Um, and again, this works for any of the files that's listed here. These files are, this is the only files that could be edited kind of just handpicked from the Splunk doc. So all of this will have uh, respective documentation and the user is expected to know what they're doing before they change any of this. Uh, but it is there for convenience sake. And the last and original view that th this app has is this sort of convenience view for creating multiple fields for a specific source type. Um, it also has uh, an extra button slash action here that will let you check if that source type has any of the fields yet. So if I do a search fields right now, it will pop out a search for the app that I selected. Um, and it will just create a, a basic search with the index and the, the, the source type that I chose. And uh, I don't have any data for this, but if there were any fields, I would see that. Uh, and this kind of comes in handy because if I go here and I added an eval field. So this, this list is populated with uh, specifically for someone creating fields for ITSI, sort of like a sim for it. Uh, if I created a signature field, that's an eval and it's supposed to be signature in the raw data. This is all just demo. Uh, uh, I can save this. And once I do that, I can rerun the search and then check if those fields are showing up. Uh, and then I can just kind of repeat that process until I'm satisfied. And we can see, uh, the changes that I just added uh, in the local file. So now the props of conf has been created and we can see the two new fields that I, would, that I added. Now these could be created using the regular inputs uh, fields functionality within Splunk, but you kind of have to do that one at a time and you can only do one type at a time. There's a separate UI for the extract, there's a separate UI for eval, uh, but I can I can actually create an extract extracted field here. And it'll let me select multiple ones and it'll also run validation on, on what I input, uh, what I type in here to make sure that I'm actually capturing all of the fields that I've defined.